Well, welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Always a treat to welcome Master Troyer from Operation Christmas Child along with Lynette Mahaffey, also from Operation Christmas Child. Good, yes. good morning to both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Why in the world are we talking about Operation Christmas Child in mid-July, Esther? Because Operation Christmas Child works year-round. We collect the boxes in November, but we do a lot of planning before that, and we get people excited about planning before that. Mm -hmm. So what can we be doing, like right now, when we're out and around, to make it top of the mind when we're running some errands? What can we be doing right now to get ready for November? Check the stores for all those summer sales especially Mm. in july check for the school supply sales because school supplies are so important in shoe boxes what kind of school supplies are you talking about as far as putting in the shoe boxes usually like crayons Mm -hmm. pencils notebooks um scissors anything that a child would use in school okay Um, colored pencils markers we don't have those lists yet but they'll be coming soon from the schools and so maybe well just buy two of everything and tuck one away in a shoebox. that's a great idea and don't forget to put in erasers and pencil sharpeners because they don't have those at their fingertips like kids Mm -hmm. here do yes you know unless you say this we don't think of it and that's the big thing with all of this it's just making it top of the mind isn't it just to be thinking about it, that this is going to come, and there are people on the other side of the world that don't have these things. There are so many children in this world that cannot go to school because they don't have a pencil and they don't have paper. And there are stories that come back to us from some of these countries where if a child does have a pencil and goes to school, the teacher will break it in thirds so that every child will have a little pencil. I'm dumbfounded i don't even know how to i've got i'm full of questions now when you say something like that um so you're telling me the schools don't have these things no the children have to provide them their own their own and you're talking about children from severely impoverished areas have must bring all of their own supplies to school right correct including paper yes Uh, Mm -hmm. even here in america You know, yes, you have, we all laugh about the whole big, long school supply list, but it's it's not the bare essentials. It's the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other thing I think we want to remember is that these children live in climates that are pretty warm all the time. And so things like sunglasses, that's that's always comes to mind that those little things always go over big. Well, Lynette and I were recently, both of us, in Tanzania, and it was so much fun watching children when they opened those boxes and they saw sunglasses. They were immediately (laughs) put onto their, um, you know, put them on, and they'd want us to take pictures, and oh my goodness, they were so adorable. They loved sunglasses. We should back up a little bit, because some people might be brand new to the whole concept of Samaritan's Purse's Operation Christmas Child. So... Tell me, first of all, what is this? Go ahead. No, go right ahead. (laughs) Samaritan's Purse is a project, excuse me, Operation Christmas Child is Mm -hmm. a project of Samaritan's Purse. And they collect items such as school supplies, hygiene items, toys for children, put them in shoe boxes or shoe box size boxes. And these are sent to children all over the world. They have so far been sent to children in 160 countries. Mm. Give us an idea of what, I won't ask you all 160, but give us an idea of some of the countries that receive these boxes. A lot of the African countries, a lot of South American countries, the Middle East. There are certain countries that we don't even know the names because they are special access. And and so we just have to be very careful with them. But like Tanzania, Uganda, um, Sudan. My goodness. Mm-hmm. How do we get these into the hands where they belong? Does uh, Samaritan's Purse work with churches, or how has this this whole thing works like a well-oiled machine? How does that work? Yes, Uh, just like we have a team that works over here in the United States get to get the prepare the boxes. There is a a team on the other side that is uh, who are training and and getting people to. 
deliver those boxes, mm-hmm. to take care of all the details to deliver the boxes. So and one thing that's kind of nice, if it's on our mind all the time, and I love mm-hmm. this because it's kind of Christmas in July. We kind of think of that, and yes. often there are sales. The day we are mm-hmm. recording this is Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> <laughs> So, (laughs) didn't? Oh, my goodness. When we're done here, check that out because, you know, we're thinking Christmas sales right now. Let's get this done and get these things hidden, and and then we won't be Mm -hmm. freaking out when it's December 24th. But to be thinking at this time of Christmas in July and when we're out and about and start to fill up a shoebox, now's the time to take you know, advantage of some yes. of these great oh, sales. Yes, Is there anything we should not include in a shoebox? We should not include toothpaste. Um, any um, items that might be like a, a war-like item. Um, no liquids or fluids of any kind. Um, nothing breakable. Br- nothing mm-hmm. breakable. Mm-hmm. So much of that is common sense. Correct. Yes. I think I would have not thought of toothpaste because when I put a toothbrush in there I automatically want toothpaste to go along with it. Exactly. Did you know toothpaste has an expiration date? Didn't know that. And Really? Yes and there are countries that have rejected whole containers of shoeboxes shipping containers because somebody went through it a customs official and found a toothpaste that was expired and expired so oh no toothpaste my. and no candy oh, anymore that's yes, that's oh that's right. the no saddest candy. thing i've ever I heard i yes. know we just cried tears but yeah you know. because of the same thing expiration date and something happening you know because these can be in shipping containers for six months so just to make sure that nothing they don't spoil or anything like that so that used to be the fun thing. Yes. Once it was full, just yes. pour candy and fill up all the nooks yes. and crannies. Mm-hmm. Is there anything we can pour over and fill up <laughs> nooks and crannies with now? Oh, well, can't boys like marbles? You sure. Could do marbles. Okay. Um, Is there a limit to what these can weigh? I'm thinking, no. oh, all those marbles might be. Fill them up. Okay. Fill those boxes up. Don't have them overflowing where, you know, the box is bending and all, but mm-hmm. fill them up to the top, to the brim. Because it's so much fun when a child opens that box and they have this beautifully filled box. Yeah, you don't want any empty spaces. No. Yes. No, you don't want to pay for shipping air. Well, good point. Yeah, that's yeah. just good stewardship right there. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the cost. Paying for shipping, who handles that? Does Samaritan's Purse pay for all this, or can we somehow participate in helping defray some of that cost? Uh, yes, uh, the shipping cost is $9 per box, and a person can uh, just slip a check for $9 or the money for $9 right inside the box uh, as they pack. What about letting them know who sent this box? Are you allowed to put a little note, oh, a card, love, a photograph, something like that? They love the notes. I saw that a lot in Tanzania where the children are asking, who sent this to me? Or they would be so excited when they would find a picture or a letter of people who had done this for them. And they were just so appreciative. I hear that children hang on to these boxes mm-hmm. as yes. well. So does it make sense? I always think of a literal shoe box, but... Those are some nice plastic containers that would be that would make great boxes to fill. What do you recommend? Plastic containers are fine if you purchase a good quality because if it's not a good quality and it goes through freezing and then hot, those plastic containers will crumble. So Samaritan's Purse actually will sell, and you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, um, a plastic container that is that will endure the heat. It will mm. also endure the cold. Or there are cardboard boxes that you can purchase from Samaritan's Purse, and those are much stronger than the earlier ones. These just came out last year. Mm. They're more of a created, and they're really awesome boxes. Are they decorated already, pre-decorated? They are. Because you know the hardest part of this was wrapping it. And you don't have to wrap if you okay. buy those. Yeah. Thank you. That always was yes, to be able yes. to wrap the lid separate yes. from the and still have it fit on top. Yeah, that was I was yeah. not good at that ever. <laughs> so okay, so we can contact can. Samaritan's Purse. What on their website to order the boxes? Yes, you can go to samaritanspurse.org and there'll be a tab there where you can order. Great. The shoe boxes. And then it's kind of nice to just 
walk around the store with the box. You know yes. for sure that everything can fit in. Mm-hmm. And then just pop that right on the conveyor belt, and there you go. It is so much fun for us to watch a parent, like if we go to Walmart or Family Dollar or wherever, and see a parent in there with a shoebox and their child and their child helping them. Because it's amazing. Take your children along shopping because they have the idea of what a child is going to like, and they come up with things sometimes that we wouldn't think of. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I've been told is that in child development, in the United States, a three-year-old would be a little more ahead of the game than maybe a three-year-old in another in a third world country or and that go, continues to go up a 12-year-old here is not the same as a 12-year-old in Tanzania say so what what should we think as far as what will a child like when we're trying to match age appropriate presence presence you can still pretty much go with the same age. Okay. We saw children in Tanzania, like the little two to four year olds. They loved the books that were so colorful, um, just as much a chi- as a child here would. And often in those countries, and I don't know about all of them, but I do know this is true in Haiti, because parents don't have resources at home to read to the children and all. They actually start going to school at three years old. Really. Yes. And so... So school uh, supplies there as well. Wouldn't have thought of that. School supplies there as well. Be, and I was told in Haiti, especially when I visited there, that it's because parents can't read. They don't have books at home. They don't have anything. They may not have books at school much, but at least they get some interaction and they get started on, you know, with their education. And I remember hearing that a 12-year-old boy doesn't mind getting a, a soft, plushy toy. No. like. So that they would be okay. It. It's, com- yes, it's comfort. It. Mm-hmm. Because life is so hard for many of them. So anything soft mm. just, you know, means a lot to them. Mm. Mm-hmm. I love the idea. Let's, let's expand on this a little bit of having children do this, ha- of mm-hmm. encouraging your yes. children to walk through and pick things for a child who is in need. Tell me more about that. Why is that important? Go ahead. Well, it's teaching children to mm-hmm. give, for one thing. Our children have so much, but if we can get our own children excited about giving to a child that may not have what they have, so I think it's teaching them you know, to give. I think it's also teaching them, because we tell these children, our children here, to pray over these boxes. So mm-hmm. it's teaching the children that their box has meaning beyond just the things they're putting into, that it's going to touch a child's life and show them how much God loves them. You both work on this year-round. Why? What is it about this that compels you to put so much effort into it around the calendar? Well, for me, I know it's because, and I witnessed it, is to see that that the shoebox is showing a child Jesus. Mm-hmm. that um, we need to pack with a purpose and we need to be really showing Jesus to the world. And it's, um, you know, the Lord told us to go out and, and uh, make disciples. And um, that's what we're doing through a shoebox. Glad you said that. We, we need to add that they do receive a gospel in their own language. Yes. yes. Is it also kind of age appropriate because some of yes. these would be going to very young children? Is it a, a, a Bible for children, a children's Bible, or what I is know, it? I know they are. They receive a booklet that's called the Greatest Gift, mm-hmm. and um, it has the whole gospel message written uh, in it, and um, it is in their language, and uh, the parents can read it. I mean, that's the other thing. So it's a way to share with the whole it, family. It's a way to share with the whole family. Mm. Yes. And it's very colorful. A very colorful, We see yes. the little ones sitting there just going through mm-hmm. these books because it's colorful and they're not used to that. They love that. Um, one of the interesting things we just found out in Tanzania was from one of the gentlemen who's gone on a lot of distributions, and he said never has he seen that little booklet left behind. Oh, the boys and that a testimony right there. Yes. My goodness. All right. It's so exciting. We're talking about Operation Christmas Child already, visiting with Esther Troyer and Lynette Mah- Mahaffey. And we will be back after these words. You're listening to Our Community. <laughs> 